Hello everyone. Welcome to the mock interview series. This is part 8 of mock interview series and today I am going to interview Ramesh. He has around 3 to 4 years of experience. I mean he falls under this 3 to 4 years of experience bracket and the skill sets are automation 360, abi, c sharp, sap scripting and ocr technologies. Any of you who is watching this video are interested to join me for a mock interview you can email your resume to the mentioned email ids or you can just click the link which i will be having in the description and just register for a mock interview let's get started so ramesh could you please briefly introduce yourself so hi dipendra i have completed my btech from manipal institute of technology mm -hmm. in electronics and communication and after that i was hired as a campus recruit for deloitte usi mm -hmm. where i was a part of two projects the first project was for a uh, american food based client where i was using a360 to automate tasks in sap gui and the second project was for a canadian healthcare client where instead of sap gui i was automating tasks for sap fury so overall uh, two years of relevant experience in automation and with 360 okay so can you please explain me your current project and what were your role and contribution in it okay sure so just a brief overview of uh, the task so we would get uh, like i said we are using sap fury for a canadian healthcare client mm -hmm. the client would get a lot of purchase order and sales orders mm -hmm. so these order and sales order would be received in a pdf format which we would use an idp tool in the beginning which is abi flexi capture mm -hmm. and then the bot would first of all place the files in the hot folder and then take it from the export folder take the machine readable excel and put all these files in uh, i mean take the data from this excel and put it into the sap fury and generate the required purchase order or the sales order and update that particular record with the generated sales order or purchase order or if there is a business exception or an error it would update accordingly and send it back to the client so in this i was uh, taking care of mostly the de development part where we would be using the all the good practices like a retry mechanism and the error file the uh, the error log file and the log file so it was like you were involved uh, you were the single person developing this or uh, you work with a, along with a team of a developers no for this uh, particular process i was the single developer but the client had multiple processes so okay. we had a supervisor as well we had a team of people working on different processes mm -hmm. but we do have also who we can reach out to okay okay and what were the roi or benefits out of this automation uh the benefits uh, i'm not very sure of the benefits uh, in terms of the monetary part mm -hmm. but i remember our senior saying that the, uh, this would be to replicate the task of two humans who's full time okay two fts okay yeah so two people who full time task was to enter these details or mm -hmm. daily mm -hmm. so what would you have to place them okay got it okay let's move on to the next question so can you describe your experience using sap gui application like creating automations uh, using sap gui application so uh, the challenges maybe so sometime right it happens that when you are automating certain screens like web scraping or using recorders so there are challenges right so can you can you just talk through those experience sure so for uh, sap gui also we were using the recorder capture instead of the sap package So even on the A360 website, they suggest to use the recorder capture. So for using the recorder capture, the main issue we had was sometimes the uh, the we have some screens in development, and when the board goes to production, there is some new pop up which we have not accounted for before because mm -hmm. it was not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then again, we have to go uh, ship the board back to development and account for those pop ups. So okay. these unknown pop ups, which uh, just wouldn't show up in the dev machine, they show up in production. that was one of the major issues which we faced yeah and second sometimes we are not able to capture a particular submit button or a particular uh, any button where we have to enter the text 
So there we in, we try to use the recorder capture, but in those cases we try to use the SAP package. Then for that we need to have knowledge about the field paths. So yeah, in some cases recorder capture is not very good at capturing some buttons. So either go for SAP package or we use the simulate keystrokes. But simulate uh, simulate keystrokes is the last option for us. Okay, to avoid that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is a, a scripting option also available. VB script that we can use in SAP, right? Yeah, but I personally didn't get the chance to do any okay. VB script. Okay. And did you? How did you mitigate like uh, the pop up issues? Like you used to fix it once you uh, got to know that issue is happening in production. So then you used to get back to dev and handle those. Uh, write a code to handle that pop up, right? Only for yeah. if the system. Is running if your automation is running in production environment. Yes, yes. Sometimes okay. in uh, also only once it happens, but in production the environment is totally different. Correct. So it won't mm -hmm. them only after it's gone to production in the client system. Okay, got it. Moving on to the next question. So, what are the important considerations for giving prod support to live bot? Did you did you give any support like for example, talking about this pop up issue? So you might have known the issue from like, I'm, I'm not sure in your organization, this RPA support team is different or it's the, it is the all in all COE who manages everything. You can, you can let me know that. Once yeah, you so develop your bot, is it a different team who manages it? The, the support part? Yes. So for uh, hypercare, we are maintenance, we have a different team. Mm -hmm. So whatever thing they can handle, uh, they handle it. But if, if something requires the development team to step in, that's when they tell us to like for this pop-up issue, that's when they tell us to come in. Okay. So at, during this time, what, like, what would be your approach? How you approach to that particular incident or a problem? Okay. So, uh, the main problems was yeah, the pop-ups and second, sometimes the input file, it mm -hmm. wouldn't be in the same format. Mm -hmm. So. That's where we decide whether it's a client side issue or something which is wrong with the technical part. So if it's a client issue, then we, the, there's a separate team to escalate and discuss with the clients to send the input file in a particular format or otherwise for these pop-ups, then yeah, we come into picture, we get the bot again and we mm -hmm. handle it accordingly. Okay. But uh, as per the important considerations, yeah, I personally didn't get the experience to do hyper care. Okay. So uh, you as a developer are not involved in during hypercare also, you just develop the bot, test it in the lower environments and do unit testing and integration testing and send it across, right? We just make, we just have a production checklist okay. where we make sure all the roles are assigned mm -hmm. and all the applications are installed. And so yeah, just that, but after that, there's a separate team. And who does the uh, code movement from dev to UAT and UAT to prod? Yeah, I do that. Okay. It's an individual developer's responsibility. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, coming to the next question. Did, uh, do you have experience working in migration? Like from V11 to A360 migration? Yes. I had contributed to a migration for okay. already existing V11 mm -hmm. to A360. Okay. Could you please, uh, describe some of the challenges that you faced during this migration activity and how did you address those? Yeah, sure. So the major challenge was that wherever there was a recorder capture after migrating, the recorder capture wouldn't work. So although it is running perfectly fine in a 11 after a 360, it is just not working. So then we had to recapture those commands again and make sure that the newer bot in a 360 is running perfectly fine. Was and it secondly, was it happening for sorry. all the recorder commands or uh, some specific commands? No, it was uh, mostly in the browser uh, commands. Okay. okay. Mostly it was random, uh, sometimes in other recorder capture in SAP also, but most of them we saw were in recorder uh, for the browser and uh, no such thing. It was just completely random wherever the recorder capture was getting stuck. So we would recapture them mm -hmm. and additionally, our team had decided to move from IE to edge. So IE to edge was done automatically uh, as you, there's an option for moving IE to edge in A360, but then they decided to move from edge to Chrome. So for us personally, in this migration, uh, all the things had to be recaptured from edge to Chrome. Uh -huh, uh -huh, okay. All the browser actions had to be changed, like launch browser and all the recorder captures. We had to change the browser and capture those objects again. 
so yeah this the main challenge was the that recorder capture actions were not working properly and we had to capture them again and additionally just in this project because of h2 chrome we had to capture everything once more so that was the primary challenge we faced okay and what about the roles and uh, like in, while importing roles v11 roles to a360 uh, global variables and there is a new concept of global variables like path getting converted right those were challenge those challenges you didn't encounter uh, no since uh, it was not completely uh, i wasn't completely responsible of handling the migration okay mm -hmm. didn't uh, come across these challenges i see i see so you might might be looking after few of the processes which were running in v11 yes, yes. and you were responsible to convert them and make it run in a360 right yes yeah okay okay would you like to explain uh, the scheduling of a bot how yeah scheduling yeah basically how you can schedule a bot in the production environment yeah so there's an option in the control room you can either run the task right away or you can set up a schedule so you can either schedule it to run once later or you can schedule it to run repeatedly on every day on a particular time mm -hmm. so bot uh, i didn't schedule it personally but i knew that it used to run at 6 am in the morning and then again 6 pm in the night once so twice a day we used to run the bot okay and it would create the emails whatever were there from the client and just accordingly run after that after downloading the attachment. so suppose i have a requirement to uh, run a bot in on certain days of a week let's say work day 1 like first day of a week and then suddenly i mean there is no fixed schedule for the bot for example in in first week it needs to run on uh, third day then uh, in the second week it should run on fourth day and in the third week it should run on first day of the week so if if i have this kind of scheduling how i can configure because for random scheduling also uh, when you mm -hmm. run the task you mm -hmm. have an option uh, in the calendar you can set the date and the time that when you want to run the bot okay yeah in the in the run bot only in the scheduling option you can set up these dates and time where you want to run the bot so using that you can carry out this action mm -hmm. okay and did you by any chance worked on optimization of uh, your runner optimization for example you uh, are building one process but it is only running as you said uh, in the morning half an hour for the mo in morning time and half an hour in the evening the rest of the day the machine is idle so did you try to reuse that machine maybe for other bot uh, have have you get a chance to optimize your runner machines hmm. no not personally but i do remember uh, that yeah other bots used to run at the same runner machine okay. and uh, yeah but just theoretical knowledge of the work workload management and the device pooling okay got but it but post you didn't get a chance to optimize so how did you handle dynamic delays and exception handling in your bot yeah so there, there are two commands one is the wait command and mm -hmm. the delay command mm -hmm. so while developing we would just uh, use uh, delay mostly and try to use wait as much mm -hmm. but in code they used to tell us that we can use wait on more places So basically, wait is a, de a dynamic delay where you wait for a particular condition, and as soon as that condition is done, then you move on to the next condition. But how? So for but example, how long do you wait for a condition to happen? It's a time out. Uh, we used to put one twenty seconds. Okay. And after that, even if that condition is not fulfilled, then it will move on to the next command or throw an error. Mm -hmm. And dynamic delay one twenty seconds. Even if the condition has been fulfilled within the first ten seconds, the bot would still wait for the remaining hundred and ten seconds. So that leads to problems in optimization, and sometimes right. the client might think that the bot has been stuck. Mm -hmm. So, to for optimization and many optimization purposes, we would use a dynamic delay. For example, if you are uh, doing an SAP login, so this is child bot for SAP login. Mm -hmm. So you launch the browser for SAP Fiori. So if we use delay, then the we can wait for a particular sixty seconds or one twenty seconds, and even after the login page is loaded, it would be just be loaded over there. but by using wait for window command as soon as the page has been loaded it will move on to adding the credentials and clicking the login button yeah that's more efficient right yeah definitely okay and, uh, uh, yeah yeah sure for exception handling yeah, so for exception handling we would ideally put the entire bot in the try option in the try command mm -hmm. and whenever there is an error it would go to the catch so wherever there is an error we would take the error line number and the error message and additionally we would capture the error screenshot mm -hmm. 
so all these things so, so when there is a catch when the catch block or catch block has been triggered so we would update in the log file that there is a error please check error log file and the error log file would have the error line number uh, the error message and it would have the error screenshot so this is for a, a technical error but sometimes if there is no error and there is a business exception like sales order could not be generated <laughs> so then we would update the status of that particular record as business exception and then we would paste the business exception message next to that record got it got it by any chance did you get chance to work on metabot in v11 oh no no okay Didn't... any any reusable component you built in a360 yes yeah so metabot was uh, like a reusable component only so for us we had the sap login which we used to reuse across all the processes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. SAP login, yeah, that was the reusable component where okay. you fire up the query browser and enter the credentials, which used to change as per the bot. Okay. So how do you make sure? So for example, if that is a reusable component, it's used by mostly all the bots that are, that are using SAP login screen, right? So, yes. I mean, how you make sure that it, it does not get modified by mistakenly and it's smooth, smooth across all the processes which are using it. So what was your, um, I mean, guardrails or a mechanism, how uh, a mechanism using which you control that there is no, um, I mean, the, there's no issue with the, with a reusable component, like no issue. Uh, yeah, the bot used to be such that it would, I mean, it would fire up the link for SAP Fury and enter the details. Mm -hmm. And after that, the next, the validation would change. So after this child, child bot has entered in the parent bot, the main task, uh, the validation would change whether the login screen, since it used to differ from one bot to another bot. So the validation part would not be in the SAP login because it is native yeah. to each process. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. But, uh, if some, since this is a, this is a reusable component, but how you make sure that nobody modifies this, I mean, if, if there is little variation, maybe, uh, with their process, they have seen little variation and they want to tweak it and they have done it, but it, you, uh, it is being used by other process also. So how you or your team make sure that reusable components are not edited random on random basis. So that was uh, my question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. In that, I, I sure there's a role for that on okay. those roles, the admin can, uh, decide whether this task should not be edited. This child bot should not be edited. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, but not very sure. Okay. It's an option, uh, like only a bot runner. Uh, so you can have a creator access for some bots and just a bot runner access for some bots. Yeah. So using rules, you can make sure that this one is not you being used as a creator or it's not edited. It's only being used as a runner. Okay. Okay. Got it. Basically a uh, permission level access, uh, sorry, access level permission to the, those folders, maybe to the reusable component folders. So only yes. certain specific users can edit it. Okay. Yeah. Moving on to the next question. Did you use these components like document automation and automation copilot of A360? Uh, no, didn't uh, get the opportunity to do that since we are using Abbey flexi capture only. Okay. But, uh, have you, do you like now it's, it's been a year, I think, uh, since these features are live in, in A360. So have by any chance, did you try it like apart from your work, have you explored these? Yeah. In copilot, I remember that, uh, copilot, you can, I'm not very sure it was called RE before I think, and now yes. it is called copilot. Yes. So, uh, there you can get a bot skeleton where you can tell, uh, for a particular action in SAP, you can just describe in the chat box and it's like a chat board. You describe the, what actions you want to perform, and then it will give you a bot skeleton. So you have the basic layout and then you can customize it as so that it works perfectly according to the requirements. Now, there are two pieces uh, here. Automation copilot for automator is that feature which you're talking about where you get a window and you describe a prompt. It will build you a skeleton for the bot. So that is one piece of it. The other piece is automation copilot for business user, which was known as RE, RE for web and RE for desktop. There are two variations. So that is something to build a process composer and process flow for your entire 
entire automation so basically human in the loop technology like you want a human you input from a human user so you i mean for that purpose you use this automation copilot oh okay okay let's move on so you have been calling out like uh, using abi flexi capture right so could, could you please uh, describe why you used abi why not any other idp solution maybe iqbot or doc automation and i mean why is the first question and how would be the second question okay sure okay for uh, we had seen that abi flexi capture had much better accuracy compared to iqbot mm -hmm. and secondly since we had uh, templates we had fixed templates for receipts and bols so abi performs much better compared to iqbot for fixed templates and iqbot is much better when the template is when the document is not very template specific it varies a lot but since we had a template specific documents coming in mm -hmm. and with better accuracy so we went ahead with abi flexi capture okay and uh, you as a team you didn't explore automation 360 that time only iqbot was explored right yeah it was already in place when i was onboarded onto the team okay uh, fine this is why part and how how did you like can you describe a little bit in technical details like around this integration and the the kind of project that you built okay sure so initially for 2 months my work was just with abi flexi capture where we had the flexi layout and the project setup so the flexi layout is where you can tell where the field elements are where on the page they are whether it's closer to the left margin or to the right margin or above a table and the project setup is the main thing where you import the flexi layout as an afl file and then you can set up the export settings and you can do some scripting in project setup so for example sometimes the part number would be given in the description not as a specific field element okay so to extract just the part number from the description we can use scripting to manipulate the extracted description and just take out the part number from that and in some cases uh, the table elements only the first row would have the particular detail and to replicate those extracted details through all the rows we can use scripting so just to get the data like from where what field element is present the flexi layout would be used and the project setup would be used to manipulate the extracted data from the ocr so that we can replicate through all rows or just extract a particular numerical element from the description okay so, so you build one piece in your uh, flexi layout abi to extract the information and store it in at some location and from that location your rpa bots would pick that data right Yes. So, for example, if we have a PDF file, so mm -hmm. in Flexi Layout, we have a hot folder which automatically uh, ingests the files which are placed in it. So, the bot would place the saved attachment into the hot folder after creating the input folders. It would place the attachment in the hot folder, and then after some time, that PDF file we would get an Excel file which the machine can read. So, it would be in the export folder. So, the ingested PDF file would either go to an export folder which is successful, or it would go to a validation folder. So where the human in the loop would then check uh, that some document was stuck in validation and those wouldn't get processed by the bot. So yeah, just the bot would place in the hot folder and then extract the files from the export folder. That's how we integrated the bot with Abi Flexi Capture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Got it. Okay, moving on to the next question. Can you please explain any three features that are available as part of latest release from Automation Anywhere? Yeah, sure. so the latest yeah version 32 so in this we have the generative ai support for uh, table elements in iqbot so previously it was just for the field elements but now no, not iqbot it's document automation okay yeah yeah so my yeah so for document automation you have generative ai even for the field elements uh, for the table elements table elements yes so mm -hmm. so after the ocr is done you can just ask the gen ai to tell you what is present in the table and it can return you the details correct so gen ai for table elements in document automation uh, the second was there was an additional functionality for uh, this google gemini and open ai mm -hmm. you had direct actions for that okay and the third one was uh, for creating a custom library previously we had to create a dll file and 
code for that. But now we can just use some drag and drop functionality, which is already present to create the custom packages, not library, custom packages. But it is yeah. only available for AWS users on cloud. Correct. correct. That's that's API. Uh, that's for connector builder. Um, yeah. For API, if you have APIs, then you can build your packages using those APIs through connector builder. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. Would you like to explain the workload management concept and have you used it in any of your automation, whether it's V11 or A360? Yeah, so uh, I just have theoretical knowledge on the workload management. Didn't get a chance to practically use it in production. Okay. Okay. For, for workload management, what I had studied was that you have multiple runner machines and multiple bots. So based on the priority, it would decide which bot needs to be run first. So if you have a runner and all the runners are busy and the next bot, you have multiple bots, which needs to be run. So using WLM, you can give a priority to the bots and then they can decide which bots will run first on which machine. So rather than fixing one bot to run only on one runner machine, sometimes if that machine is taken, so the bot will run on some other available runner machine instead yeah, so of just what, waiting. Yeah. So what, uh, what concept does this WLM uses? Like how it knows which machine is free and where to run the automation. What concept? I think device pooling concept. No, no, but see, WLM is a management queue, right? Uh, which is available as part of control room. How it knows oh. which of the runner machine is now freed up or uh, where it can trigger the uh, bot now or divide the load. So how it will know basically what, how, how, how it, I mean, you got the question, right? How, how it usually determines whether now the machine is free and it can trigger a bot there. There is a, not very sure, but I think there's a queue manager also in, uh, and there's a separate role for queue admin also. So using the queues it can get the details. Mm, no, not really. So you mentioned in your resume that you have used C sharp, uh, code snippets, right? In your RPA, uh, solutions. So for example, if something goes wrong in your code, how, what is your debugging approach on, or how do you optimize your, those kind of solutions? Like you independently debug those or how? Yeah. So the C sharp, which we were using was an Abbey flexi capture itself. Okay. And yeah, for debugging, since we only used, we had separate C sharp, uh, scripts for separate documents. So the debugging used to be done by ourselves only. So while, uh, while coding the scripts in C sharp, there used to be an option called check, check script. Mm -hmm. So the check script is fine. That means syntactically it is correct. And that was the only debugging, which we are using. And that and is for within, the logic, within the Abbey, uh, flexi capture itself. Yes, there was an editor for a script okay. for in C sharp. Okay. So after that, only if the script is uh, syntactically correct, only then we could publish the script or publish the changes. Okay. So if it is syntactically not correct, we can't publish it ourselves. And any any experience with building uh, independent DLL? Maybe you have built a C sharp code and a DLL and then use it in your RPA solution. Any experience? Uh, no, didn't get the opportunity for that. Okay. No worries. Okay, moving on to the next. So again, the question would be on AB Flexi Capture for your OCR and uh, IDP related stuff. So what is the technology being, I mean, if you can describe how, how this Flexi Capture cap, uh, extracts the data out of the uh, file. So how, how do you utilize Flexi cap, uh, Capture for, for these things? Yeah, so OCR is uh, basically just taking out the text from an image, uh, whether a PDF file or a different PNG format. Mm -hmm. And on the backend, it uses basically the white and black recognition. So whatever is white, it knows that that is not the text and just the background mm -hmm. and whatever is black, it takes that as text. So on the backend, this is uh, the basic, uh, functionality of OCR it, using black and uh, white. It recognizes what is the text and OCR has been there since a long time. IDP is something where you have to make sense out of the extracted text. Correct. So it, yeah, so in IDP there, uh, you have to train the Abbey flexi capture to 
detect the extracted text, whether recognize it basically, whether this extracted text is part of which label field, like a part number or a or a ship to or a ship from address or the sales order number. So OCR would be first, uh, like first OCR is necessary, but for the second stage would be classification that which uh, vendor does this document belong to. And then mm -hmm. after recognizing the vendor, we had some markers for the vendors, like the vendor name would be present or different positions for the vendor name. And finally, once the vendor has been decided, then extracting the data, whatever field elements, which we had trained Abbey Flexi capture. So those it would extract using the multiple trainings, which we had provided to Flexi capture before. Okay. 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 Thanks Ramesh. Uh, I'm done with my interview. So how was your experience regarding this interview? Yeah, it was very nice. It was very close to the actual uh, interview experience. Okay. Okay. Cool. And it gives me a lot more things to think and prepare well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions do you have for me? Uh, no, just the feedback, your feedback. Okay. Uh, for the feedback, I, I think uh, your interview really went well and you have a grasp of all the concepts that you have worked on. I mean, some of the concepts that you haven't worked on, but those, uh, I think are a must know, for example, the new features or capabilities of a360, like DA and copilot mm -hmm. and, and along with that, the workload management queue, right? You should try to get hands on, maybe build something, um, if you're not getting an opportunity to use it in your project, but try, uh, uh, try to build something when, uh, practical expo exposure is different, uh, compared to the theory, right? You, you actually get to see what challenges you face and how the concept actually works. So that would be my uh, feedback to you. And apart from that, everything was good. You are, you are really confident on what you have worked and implemented. So good luck for the future. All the best. Sure. Thank you. Thanks, Sipendra.